Okay. So January, February, so, so 30 days have September. October, or September is nine, right? So let's, let's, this is the poem I was talking about. 30 days have September, April, well, just to, j just so I don't confuse anyone, let's go ahead and you know, put in some more of these just so we can see. We can create an extra variable in the class and, and for example, set it to the, the name of the, the month, but the question didn't say that, so, uh, so, so let, let's not do that. April, May, June, July. Uh, it's fine. So, um, November, December. Okay. <laughs> I'm almost done with this. Let me just finish it. I'll delete these comments. Okay, once we're done with it. Right. So, 30 days have September, April. June and November, right? So January, February, March, April, June, and November. You know what? <laughs> and then December. So I'm almost done with it. It helps make it clear. All right, now we have all of them. <laughs> January, February, March, April, May. Oh, we don't have April. Oh boy, I'm gonna type in. Okay, so 30 days have September, or is it April? June and November. All the rest have th uh, ha have thirty one. So so December has thirty one. Everything else has thirty one, right? Except February alone, which has twenty eight days every other year, but then twenty nine days every leap year. So now we have to come back to this block and figure out based on the value of year if it's a leap year or not. And if it's a, if it's a leap year, we set number of days. To 29. If it's not, then we set number of days to 28. Okay, so we were told that in the question itself. So I'm going to go ahead and create a block here. Before we set number of days to even 28, let's just create a, create a couple of spaces here. Now in the question it says the method should use the following criteria to identify leap years. Now, determine whether the year is divisible by 100. So let's start with that. Determine wh whether the year is divisible divisible by 100. So let's create an if if block or if the, yeah if block in this case. If the month is February, I'm going to go ahead and create an if block here. And so we're going to say if. Over here, the question over here sta stated that determine whether the year is divisible by 100. Okay, so the way we do that is if the value of the year, which we already have here as a field, is divisible by 100, meaning it's it meaning if if, it, if it's evenly divisible by 100. So m if the year modulus 100 is equal to zero, if you divide it by 100 and you get a remainder of zero, and the, mo the modulus gives you a reman the remainder of the division of year and 100. So year divided by 100, if it gives you a remainder of zero, so this this, this gives you the remainder. Using the division sign gives you the, the division, okay, the actual division, but using the modulus gives you the remainder. So if you divide um, the year by 100 and you get a remainder of zero, then that's evenly divisible. So if the year modulus 100 is equal to zero, okay, Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and read th the question. Determine whether the year is divisible by 100. If it is, then it, then then it, it is a leap year. If and only if it's divisible by 400. Okay. So if the year if it's divisible by 100, then let's also check to see if it's if it's divisible by 400. And if it is, then it's a leap year, right? So 
in this block, we're going to create another if. Now I'll indent this in a second. Hold on. Okay, so now we are checking to see if year is divisible by 400. So if year modulus 400 is equal to zero, meaning if you divide yeah, year and 400 and you get your remainder of zero, then it's evenly divisible. Okay, so over here it said, you determine whether year, year is divisible by 100. We've, we've done that here. If it is, then let's go ahead and check again to see if it's divisible by 400. If it is, then it, then it, then it is a leap year if, it, if and only if and if only it is divisible by 400. For example, 2000 is a leap year, but 2100 is not. Okay. Maybe I should pull up my calculator for this just to illustrate this. But um, but that's the idea. That's the idea. All right. So in the, in this case, when it passes all those if uh, statements, then we know that it's a leap year. So in that case, then set days, or number of days rather. So number of days. Let's set that to. Oops, this is supposed to be number of. Well, I named it as number of days. Huh? Capital. Change all of them. Okay, so let's say number of days over here. And in this case, when it passes all of this, then let's say number of days to 29 because 29 days in February if it's a leap year. All right, now let's read the next point. If the year if the year is not divisible by 100, so that will be the else part of this if statement. This is only going to run if the year is, is divisible by 100. If it's not, then that's going to be the else part of it. Okay, so let's let's see. If the year is not divisible by 100, then it is a leap year if and only if it is divisible by 4. So now let's check the else part is if is divisible by f by 4, right? So else if. So if it's not divisible by 100, then the else part is going to run. But in the else part, we also want to check to see if it's divisible by 4. If it's not divisible by 100, let's check to see if it, if it's if it's divisible by 4. And if it is, then that's that then that's a leap year because it said if the year is not divisible by 100, then it is a leap year if and if and if only it is divisible by 4. So we are checking to see if it's divis um, if it's divisible by 4. So if the year is if the year divided by 4 gives you a remainder of 0. Okay, if the year modulus 4 gives you a remainder of 0. When you divide 4 and you get a remainder of 0 zero then that means it's visible the year um the year is div divisible by four okay when you divide four and you get a remainder of zero um then, you, then it means the year is, is divisible by four so if that's the case then we know that we have oh hold on one second then we know that we have a leap here right so in that case let's go ahead and set uh, let me hold on and see one second. Yeah, then we know that we have a leap year. So let's go ahead and set the number of days also to 29, right? Now, else, then we don't have a leap year. Else, we don't have a leap year because that, that's it. That's actually how to determine if we have a leap year or not. Now, else, we don't have a leap year. So set number of days to be equal to 28. Okay, so that's what we figured out for February in the case of in the case of two, uh, when, when we're in the month of February. And then we don't need this. We don't need this, we're done. All right. So it's going to go, go through this based on, based on the logic in the question to figure out if it's a leap year or not. And we're going to assign the right number of days, whether it's 29 or 28. Okay. So in these two cases, they are, they are, that means that in these two cases, that means they are, uh, that means that year is a leap year. In this case, this else part of it, so that means it's not a leap year. So that we figured we figured that out. And then once we, we define this method to return an integer, right? So once we have days, this is the, the switch block. You can see that it's highlighting 
the switch opening curly brace, closing it here. So once we are done in the method itself, we are going to return days, which is an integer. Okay, sorry, number of days, which is an integer. An integer here because we define this method to return an integer. So it's going to go ahead and return an integer here. And we have our constructor. We have the, the method get number of days. Now you can certainly break this down into multiple methods, you know, private methods, and you know, and but but we've done everything in one because we are just trying to follow strictly. You know the question we are not even going to go ahead and create accesses or mutators in this in this we are just going to use the constructor to set the values but normally classes have accesses and mutators um, to set the values of the fields but we, but we are going to use a constructor just for this question you can add the constructors and mutators um, yourself um, it's, it's not hard at all you can look at the other videos I have it almost in almost in all the classes that I've created. I, this is the only one I think I haven't created on an access and mutator, just because the question didn't ask for it. And, it, and you really, it's not, it's not really needed for this particular question, right? Just, to, just for us to see the result. So we, in that case, then we are, done, we, are, we are done with this class. So let's go ahead and compile this. And I'm going to save it in my Java folder here, Programming Challenges Chapter 6. I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it Days in a Month. And I'm going to save this class as days in a month. Okay, dot Java. It has to be the same as the name of the class, right? So days in a month. Dot Java, right? Dot Java. But it's it's going to end it with dot Java um, dot Java um, by itself if if you leave it. So I'm going to save this here. Let's see if you have any errors. And we do. Oops. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to put an if statement in this block. I, re I already had my if clause here, right? So I wasn't supposed to put it here. I don't know why I did. Maybe I was, I was over talking. Okay, so I'm going to remove it and compile it again. Let's see. Um, cannot find symbol number of days. Cannot find symbol number of days. Okay, so number of days, we've set it to zero. Oops, because I didn't, I didn't um, set the type. I don't know why. I'm sure some of you caught it, uh, if not all of you. But um, number of days is going to be an integer. We know that, right? So I forgot to type, so I've, I have to type an integer. Just to specify that this number of days is an integer. Compile this, and then now we are done. Okay. So this is not a program on its, on its own. It's just a class, a class that uh, someone can use. With, you know, someone... Anyone can use, basically. You create your program and you can use this class. This is not a, a complete program. So if you try to run it, you're, you're going to have a, an error. It doesn't have a main method or anything like that. So this is just a class we're using. So we're going to go ahead and create another program to test this class. So I'm going to go ahead and create a public class. And I'll call it days in a month test. Days in a month test. Right. And I'll go ahead and I'll create the main method. All right, so I'm also going to copy the question just so we have access to it here. All right, so demonstrate once we've once we've done f you know figuring out the leap years and everything, demonstrate the class in the program that asks the user to enter the month. Okay, letting the user enter an integer in the range of one through twelve. So demonstrate the class by asking the user to enter a month. So we are going to be using some, some kind of feature to ask the user to enter an input, right? So we can either use the J option pane or we can use a scanner class. Now for this one, I'm going to use a scanner class, right? I'm choosing to use a scanner class. You can go ahead and use a J option pane, but I'm just choosing to use a scanner class. Just mixing it around a bit. Uh, a bit. In other programs, I've used a J option pane. In other programs, I've used a, I've used a scanner class. So in order to use a scanner class, we have to go ahead and import it, right? So import. Java X dot util dot scanner. Now we have access to the scanner class. Now, so now, yeah, with the scanner class, we have to go ahead and create an object, a, sc a scanner object, so we can use it to accept input from the user. So I'm going to go ahead and create a scanner object here. So sc scanner, I'm going to call this object scanner. 
I've created a scanner object, a, a scanner reference variable here, which is going to reference a, a scanner object. So I'm now going to create a new scanner object in memory. I'm going to pass in the system dot in method, which is basically going to accept byte info from the keyboard. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect it to this kind of uh, var reference variable here. So now basically I've created, um, I've, I've basically created a scanner object in memory and I have, I've, I've co connected it to the keyboard, accepting byte info from, from, the key, from the keyboard, from the user. And then I am returning using this equal sign, the reference location of this object to this kind of reference variable here. Okay, this kind of reference variable here. So now this represents the this kind of object in, in essence. All right, so now let's use this kind of object to ask the user to enter input, right? So I'm going to just use a system that out the print ln statement to so ask the user to over here, it says demonstrate the class. Okay, so asking the user to enter the month, right? So let's say, please, well, we can see it in, the, in display here, enter a month, but let's just add please just to be polite. <laughs> so please enter a month. And we're going to use a scanner object we just created to accept input. So I'm going to call scanner.nextInt because we know the user is going to type in an int, right? Now, scanner.nextInt, is basically going to pop up uh, some kind of text box and allow the user to type in something. And whatever the user types is going to be returned. Uh, first of all, it's going to be converted to an integer and then returned. And when, once it's returned, we need a place to store it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable and I'm going to call it user month. But user month <laughs> is, a, is an integer. So let's define an int variable, call it user month. And once the user types in something, and that thing is, is converted to an integer, we want to store it in user month because we've defined user month as an integer to accept the month, right? So now we have the user month. Also, let's use the same thing, the same idea to ask the user for the year. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it here and change this from please enter a month to please enter a year. And then we're going to create a variable. It's also going to be an integer to store the year, so user year. Ask the user to type in something, right? It's, we are going to use, we are using the scanner.nextInt method to pop up some kind of text box and allow the user to type in the year. Once the user, ty once the user types in the year, that's a year, that year is going to be converted to an integer and returned. And once it's returned, we want, we want to go ahead and store it in user year. So we're going to store it here in user year like this. Okay. So now